everybody. Eric McCool here of Permagora.com. Today I am speaking with Cal Molinet of Liberate RVA, uh, an organization in West Virgi or in Virginia, I should say, that is all about promoting the ideas of anarchy and the removal of forceful rulers. And um, this is my first ch time to talk talk with Cal, and so I'm excited to talk a little bit about his organization. And if you haven't seen him on the internet. Cal goes out in the streets and does these really awesome sort of interviews where he talks to people and I really am impressed with the, the, the style that you have, Cal, to, to, to reach out to people. So tell me a little bit about that. When you're out there, are you you have you have signs up, right? Is it, they, do they come up to you or do you go up to people to get to into conversation with them? Oh uh, yeah, they, they come up to me. Uh, I have a sign that asks the question, ask me how government is immoral. And then from there, you know, they come out of curiosity or humor, which is a good place to be when we're having, I would say, the most important conversation in the world that you should ha be having in terms of uh, the argument against the state that is presented. So, uh, yeah, they come to me. And then the discussion, the I set up the um, algorithm that I created, which um, asks them to reveal what their moral positions are in regards to the initiation of force. And then I paint the the broad uh, picture of uh, what is government and how the government is immoral and then we can now have these these conversations about what about the roads, what about security yeah. uh, and it becomes very easy yeah. after that to, to talk about once we establish uh, these moral positions. So you basically get them to confirm what their moral position is about using force is not what I do to solve problems, it's not right to do and then I guess the connection from that to the government and the fact that they do it isn't always on everybody's mind and you're able to guide them through that process. And I've seen several of the videos and it's amazing to see. I mean, it's amazing to see how some people are like, oh yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> I didn't think about it like that before. So um, yeah, I highly recommend anyone who hasn't seen Cal's videos to check those out. If you're ever interested in talking to people about this whole issue, it's a great template. And your algorithm, I want to get that in word for word. I could get it off of your YouTube videos and write it down. I'll probably do that. I won't ask you to go through the whole thing here. But <laughs> I definitely I definitely recommend that for people because it's a, it's a powerful tool to connect the dots in ways that people don't always do. Right, also, yeah, uh, could you talk about... Oh, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, it reveals, uh, you know, most people are... Uh, in their day-to-day -day lives, act uh, voluntarily, act, uh, you know, value consent in their, their interactions, uh, find the initiation of force to be wrong and immoral, and then upon discovering what is the state, what is government, it is nothing but the initiation of force that only knows how to solve problems through violence, and then you find that the government then misleads you at times to compromise your virtues, right? Um, and right. so after that then comes, uh, you know, the solutions. Let's continue to find ways to solve our community problems or uh, the ways that we uh, looked at government to think that it had been solving it, but it has not in the, in the degree that we would want it to. And let's continue to turn away from that, which only knows how to use uh, violence to solve this problem towards the nonviolent solutions we already apply and use in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, and that's pretty much the, the breakdown of it. And that brings out a lot of fun conversations, a lot of good friends have come out from there. And that has mm -hmm. been the, I guess, the uh, activism that we do most here in reaching out and bringing a lot mm -hmm. more people towards, uh, to the side of freedom, as it were. Yeah, and you, you, you make new friends and invite them to, uh, you have meetings, right, with the uh, Liberate RVA, that's sort of like a local group that gets together, am I correct? Yeah, it's our uh, Anarchy Tribe. Uh, Liberty RVA is a non-political organization, so we have nothing to do with politics, the line politicians that come with it. Uh, so nothing to do with uh, any political party. And then we do monthly uh, gatherings. We have a lot of different kinds of meetings. We have uh, survival stoicism, which uh, practices more like an internal freedom. We have a uh, reading club about to come out soon. We have now an affiliation at the local university at VCU, so a lot of activities, uh, firearms training, uh, <laughs> we have our, oh yeah, yeah, we have our festival in October coming up uh, as well, Anarchon, so uh, there's a lot of stuff that's going on uh, here in Richmond and uh, creating this uh, community that we kind of have to continue to grow and grow until finally we're strong enough to unplug the matrix that is the state altogether and end it once and for all. Um, and then yeah. we'll have our peaceful transition to to freedom, find absolute freedom, economic freedom, the freedom of mm -hmm. self-ownership, freedom of uh, respecting property rights. Right. That's a tricky issue in the the world of trying to, in, in, the, in the idea of trying to remove forceful governments and forceful 
institutions, a lot of people are concerned that without them, their property is not going to be protected. They're going to have people come in to try and redistribute wealth, which, you know, I, I kind of juggle both worlds. I kind of go back and forth between both worlds, both in my own thoughts and with other people, where I feel like people, there are cases in which some people might have too much, you know, where people are asking for too much of the world and people are living with a sense of entitlement where they believe that they should have people be their slaves, basically. And they claim they claim too much property, and it's it's unreasonable. And yet, I'm not trying to advocate that the rest of us go and like beat them up and take their stuff. I guess I'm just trying to advocate a balancing out of what it is people are asking of the world, while at the same time, an insistence on people respecting that which is irrefutably the right the rightful property of someone, something that you create personally, something that is in your immediate sphere of life, and. I'm curious what you think about that. I mean, are you are you of the position that people have the right to unlimited property, whatever uh, they can grasp I mean, I guess control I, of? The only reason we have property rights is uh, to resolve conflicts of dispute. Right? Resources are scarce, so the only way you can have property, the only two justifiable ways, is homesteading, unknown resources, and exchange of uh, goods. Right? Title exchange. And that's it. Right? Uh, mm -hmm. In terms of, uh, I don't I don't lose any sleep at night. Knowing that Bill Gates has uh, a lot more money than me, right? That has more mm -hmm. cars than me and more houses than me. I don't lose. I sleep like a kitten. <laughs> I'm perfectly fine. <laughs> These things do not concern yeah. me. Uh, the only thing I can control are my 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 choices, my my sphere of influence, and that's about it. I think uh, a lot of people uh, kind of spend their lives. Uh, I guess it seems like their happiness is dependent on what other people are doing instead of minding their own business mm -hmm. and work on their own economic independence. Um, in terms of uh, people having a lot more stuff, a lot of the stuff, yeah, might be subsidized because of the state. Uh, without the state, you wouldn't have these corporations, you wouldn't have these uh, protective interest right. groups, you wouldn't have laws that uh, stop the educated poor from competing. You wouldn't have any of this stuff that uh, has allowed, uh, yeah, like you mentioned, a lot of amassing of resources. But today, even though that's occurring, that, that doesn't bother me at all. It doesn't affect me in any way. Yeah. Um, and in terms of it's the abolishment of the state, we'll do away with the abolishment of that kind of uh, government security blanket for these uh, corporations. And now everyone's at an even uh, playing level field, right, in terms of competition. So after that, mm -hmm. uh, without the state to subsidize them, I can't really foresee them continue to be uh, as, as enormous as uh, they are today. Um, yeah, and I, I would agree with that. I think that that's really what enables people to become so inordinately wealthy is not in, in, a, in a totally voluntary society. They wouldn't be able to get that wealthy without having to be more direct about putting the gun to people's head. You know, people that are working in diamond mines and in sweatshops and things like that wouldn't do that if it weren't for pressures that are made possible by the monopoly of governments and monopoly on violence. I, I, yeah, I, I think mean, of it because I'm, there's... Right. Well, I, I, I think of it because of the whole Nestle struggle. This Nestle water company is stealing up all the water and they're claiming ownership to all the water out here in California and there's a big battle going on up in Mount Hood area of Oregon and I guess I feel like nobody can own that water. You can't just claim that, that source of water and say this is all ours and we're going to bottle it and sell it and you guys are not even going to, your wells are running dry but we don't, I mean, you know, I'm again, I'm not trying to advocate that you don't have right, if you have a piece of land and there's a spring on your land and you homestead that land that you can say, hey, this is my water. I guess I just feel like it's easy to carry that implication a little too far to the point where people will claim the whole world and they can't live and occupy it all at the same time and so there's going to be other people that are going to come around and say hey I'm here I want to do something and I don't feel like they deserve to be shot for trespassing on somebody's million acre ranch or something like that but <laughs> it's a, it's a contentious issue I know it's not it's not something that's easy to like agree on how do we how do we limit what people are able to claim as far um, as um, it's if you can homestead it right um, and there wasn't really that much of a problem with people going out into the not so wild west to homestead uh, people kind of define what is homesteading you know what it what it, you, you build your walls right in terms of uh, what mm -hmm. you own and you start working I guess through the environment from there but in terms of uh, land availability the federal government owns like more than one-third of the land here in the United States uh, that is a lot mm -hmm. of land that th those thieves and murderers prevent people from homesteading rightfully so right, right? so that is under totally. land right totally. so there's plenty of land out there uh, the abolishment of the state and the homesteading of these lands will just go to its most uh, efficient state. Uh, people will sell mm -hmm. the land off, people will buy that land, people will uh, continue to reuse it in uh, different kinds of uh, um, suits of businesses. Like um, the store that Blockbuster had to close down, someone will come in and, and you know, because they weren't able to keep up and 
uh, transform mm-hmm. it into something else, right? So I'm not totally. really, first, I'm not really that concerned in terms of like land grab because then there's the sea, then there's the sky, and then um, if we can uh, liberate this planet, then there are <laughs> spaceships and planets, uh, the stars, yeah. right? Um, and of course, you can build underground. Uh, there's so, there's, there's uh, communities in Australia that do just that. So there's a lot of uh, ways you can go about it, but most of these things are restricted from government. They're eminent domain through their monopoly, right. so we don't really particularly see a lot of these things out there. That's a good point, and I, I agree with you about the, the idea that it's not something we have to worry about too much. It's really just a philosophical point that I sometimes come into disagreement with people in the sort of ANCAP scene who I guess I feel there's a little bit of a naivety to the idea that infinite wealth can exist without slavery and aggression against other people. But that's not that's not where I want to go with everything tonight. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious about I'm curious about uh, your take on consensus and community. A lot of people exploring voluntarism wonder how agreements can ever be reached regarding uh, what constitutes aggression, what constitutes appropriate uh, response in defense. So. Um, you know, I kind of think it's up to each individual community to come up with these sorts of, you know, maybe we don't want to call them rules, but we want to call them sort of guidelines, agreements as to how do we deal with this if this happens. And I wonder if you could talk about community and the role you see it playing in the, the concept of jurisdiction in a voluntary society. Yeah, that's that's a good one. I think uh, a lot of the problems that we have today is uh, lack of good, carefully defined words uh, and terms in terms of what the government does and uh, combines uh, a lot of words and conflates them, equivocation, uh, combines abstract or concrete concepts. They'll say like, uh, for example, the social contract is a real contract, but you know, you can't show it to anyone. So there's a lot of, uh, or they say it's taxation is not theft, right? There's a lot of weird ways that the government does to kind of confuse language and having clear, mm-hmm. concise language is a way out of the matrix uh, as it were as well. And so I would imagine then, uh, in the absence of government, you have thousands of free societies based on consent, catering to your lifestyle preferences. Uh, and of course, the rules that uh, the reign are the rules of property rights, right? The rules in your house, for example, don't transcend across the river into my own home, right? And so it'd be like that mm-hmm. in these particular communities, um, which are founded with uh, an appreciation for property rights. Uh, which is why you don't really hear much of like the Amish jumping over people's fences and uh, you know, breaking in and burglaries <laughs> or anything like that. Right. Um, but the Amish do have uh, one rule in which you know this is our way of life. Uh, we like agriculture. We like hard work. Uh, we like uh, not so much. We, were, we like being Luddites, you know. And so the only yeah. consequences they have for breaking those rules is social racism. There's no stockade. There's no fine. There's no capital punishment. But they have a respect for property rights and that the child, when they are finally of age, they can give consent to those rules because babies can't give mm-hmm. consent. Whereas here in the United States, they say that they can, right, in terms of using uh, children as collateral for Social Security, in which they can't really give agreements to. Uh, so I would imagine then the underlying uh, rules that we would have is this uh, respect for property rights. Uh, and uh-huh. outside of that, yeah, you may have a lot of different uh, approaches to uh, how those are defined in terms of how, or how they're uh, en- en- enacted, different kinds of rules. Like uh, you can now finally have a 420 friendly community, one across the street that's not, right? Um, mm-hmm. And so that's pretty much how it will work. The jurisdiction of those rules, again, will apply only to that community. It won't extend outside, of course, across the river into my own home or the community I live in. Um, and that's that can only be done, of course, through good understanding of what is property rights, uh, good understanding of yeah. what is violence. Violence would be defined as placing a person in an involuntary position without their consent or choice, i.e. rape, murder, theft, or assault, all violations of body ownership. And from there, we can come to a better place of understanding because as it stands here today with a lot of people, uh, they sometimes there's a conflation of the initiation of force and defending yourself from the initiation of force. And they think like mm-hmm. the two are the same thing, the two are violence, but it's always good to come out with these clear definitions, as like you were mentioning earlier, because yeah, self-defense is not violence, it's defending yourself from the initiation of that violence. And so I think we can come to a better uh, understanding of the role together and, and trying to work together by yeah, having this, these kind of terminologies kind of hashed out. Um, mm-hmm. But that will go, of course, uh, that's when we ha- finally have that uh, and the whole world has a good understanding of that, that's when we finally have an Arkistan. Um, so 
in terms of uh, I like that. yeah. So it's not a uh, we, we can have slices of an Arkistan, but we don't yet have an Arkistan until all the thrones of uh, tyranny have been abolished, and then and yeah, then find, and then because our, our mission doesn't end right after uh, liberating Richmond here, if they're spreading anarchy, then we move on to the next city and we can continue mm -hmm. until uh, everyone's finally free. Um, and yeah. Then, yeah, and, and then we do that by spreading property rights, uh, respect for, for one another's uh, obligation to respect uh, your self-autonomy. So That's awesome, man. I think you, you word that really well. And the idea about getting really clear about terms and having clear definitions that anyone can look up and see what what's meant by this, I think that's really important for making these agreements and getting people to understand how this could work. So thank you for that. Um, I... I feel like we need alternatives to government monopolies on policy making and I want to know how we can organize these counter councils we might call them for local policy making and actually give the agreements that real people in communities come to any bearing on the ground in real situations and another way to put that is it's like I feel like we can't try and reform the existing forms of government we have even though you might have more effect voting in a local or county election than you would in a national election Voting in new people to the county commissioner is not going to liberate us from the, you know, force-backed regulations of the county. And I'm just trying to visualize some way in which people can come together and create alternative bodies that can make decisions and then therefore back those decisions up with protection from the, ex the, 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 the competition, so to speak, you know, the other guys. And it's tough because, you know, they have the monopoly on violence and it's like, I don't know if it can be done peacefully. I'm wondering if you have any thoughts on that. Yeah, uh, I mean, even locally, uh, the whole voting stuff just doesn't work at all. Uh, for example, uh, you may have something on a, on a referendum to raise taxes, and even if people voted it down, they already have non-voter municipal bonds on the ready to go, so you're still going to pay for it. <laughs> it's all yeah. a sleight of hand, a distraction. It's just uh, theater, just for you to make you feel yeah. like you have a choice. So it has no effect uh, whatsoever in, in, in that degree in terms, but... Uh, and at the same time, of course, there's an advocation, limitation, but we could talk voting in, in another time. But um, yeah, locally, I guess the, um, in terms of policies and in terms of how people's lives should, uh, should go ahead and, and, and behave, I guess, is that, that, that the question? Um, I mean, I'd, I'd imagine spontaneous order would arise from there. Uh, in terms of policies, I think that will be, uh, I guess you're, you're, you're talking about how we will contend with it now. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so now, from them, yeah, right. So now, while we're in this cage, the policies would be uh, peaceful parenting. That's a big one. Uh, we, in order mm -hmm. to build a peaceful future, it starts with uh, raising a peaceful generation, right? So that's the policy yeah. here, for example, that we have with Liberty RVA. Uh, another one would be uh, respect for property rights. That's something that, uh, in terms of our interactions with one another, these are people I can trust. These are people that I can. Uh, uh, we have fun here often. We meet up all the time. We have dinner. We play games. We go out to spread anarchy. Uh, we go to movies. We go shooting together. Um, every day, I'm running, I'm meeting a lot of uh, on my community here, um, and we agree with these sort of things. In terms of uh, self-defense, is something that, uh, in terms of you could say policy, but that's something not the saying that you have to have a gun, but self-defense comes starting with the individual knowing that. Many Supreme Court cases have decreed that government has no obligation to protect your life, liberty, or property. Uh, Duchenne versus Winnebago County, Warren versus District of Columbia have already said it doesn't exist. So the policy would be, of course, this being a non-political organization is another policy in that we don't advocate for political rulers. Uh, we don't participate in the uh, legitimization of our own enslavement. Uh, so those kind of policies in terms of uh, our organization is what will keep this message alive, which will never allow this message to be bastardized because it's universal. There's no exception. You create an exception to politics and then eventually down the road it will fall apart, just like every other movement in the past have, uh, has done. Right. So yeah. the policy would be we don't compromise our principles for politics and let's continue to find solutions, nonviolent solutions outside of government and figure out a way forward from there. I mean, anarchy just says that. Uh, we are against those who advocate for the throne of tyranny, for those who, who dare want to sit on that or are sitting on that. But it doesn't give you uh, a way out of there. That's something for us to figure that out, right? So the more yeah. and more of these different ideas come in together, um, you know, agoristically, uh, in terms of like, mm -hmm. uh, that's, these, these are all the ways that we can kind of move forward towards our 
own independent freedoms, but at the same time, we do it together as a community. And like we've done a lot of different talks. Uh, permaculture would be a fun one to have here as well. Um, and the monthly freedom guidance that we have, uh, bring in a lot of different talents and skills and experiences so people come in and give talks on those so that we can share this kind of knowledge and skills to one another. So yeah, yeah. I would say the policies that we have is uh, let's be uh, the best there is, a good anarchist, uh, let's build good character here, uh, we're not people to ever compromise our integrity, and let's continue to build something that's never been done before and go all the way in an anti-political campaign in a, in a community that respects uh, body integrity of, of all people, regardless how tall and small they are. Mm -hmm. Awesome, man. And, you know, I think that's, that's right on with what we can do is work on ourselves and make agreements amongst ourselves and just sort of spread the word. And I, th I think that's what you're doing with, with your work. And so I think that's really cool. I feel like also there's, there's kind of an urgency that I feel to, to removing the most dangerous people from seats of power and I feel like the whole planet is at stake right now and I don't know I don't have an answer to this I've been trying to scratch my head trying to figure out what can we do how can we found lawful you know natural common law lawful ways and in institutions to go out and arrest the real criminals the perpetrators of the real conspiracies against the public and against nature and try them in legitimate common law courts like is that even possible do you think is it worth trying to like come up with systems by which we can do that uh that is going to be quite an endeavor to go through um i would imagine that um, at one point throughout our lives in the matrix uh somebody did vote and someone would there be responsible to be part of that criminal conspiracy to get a violent thug like a politician uh to then have their ideas and opinions uh, aggress against me and others right the the means to an ends of aggressing against me uh, and that's, or we have some uh, people who were former uh, police extortionists. We have some people who were in the part of the murderous organization that was in the military, like myself. Uh, so there's a lot of, uh, I would say, uh, history. I would imagine of a lot of people who have done bad things unknowingly, right? Who were a part of this day was part of the machinery right. of death and murder and mayhem, um, but unplugging themselves. A way out of there now is, uh, in terms of making amends, is now building a real peaceful community here, fighting for the freedoms that we're losing here at home, not overseas, and working towards that endeavor in terms of, uh, you can say, of uh, redeeming yourself. Uh, in terms of um, the uh, other people out there, in terms like what you're mentioning, um, maybe there might be an opportunity for them to redeem themselves as well. Uh, no one's hands is entirely clean, in the, so to speak. And mm -hmm. what we will see then, um, I'm not quite sure. For me, the most important thing right now is to uh, gather everyone else that's not a violent sociopath, right? Uh, less than 1%, you know, government here is, is less than 1%. There are your police extortionists, there are your political rulers, there are your IRS agents, right? Uh, not a lot of people, right? 99% of them mm -hmm. are not violent sociopaths. So right now the first focus of the mission is to uh, unite everyone else towards uh, this community and, and, and unite as a tribe and then we can concern ourselves with the one percent and of course if by that time uh, when we lost social ostracism day we could say listen if you want to be part of this peaceful society um, you know you're gonna to have to take anger management classes you're gonna to have to <laughs> go through a series of steps right. to redeem yourself if you want to be part of this free society otherwise good luck building a AC unit in the middle of the woods um, or reinventing uh, the internet uh, because no one's going to talk yeah. to you. you know, it's, it's economic suicide, right? Yeah. Um, so I would imagine uh, that would be the most uh, force you can do through social ostracism uh, to kind of get them to be on board. Otherwise, have fun, uh, you know, scratching uh, your ass in the woods and, uh, you know, not being able to have access to any kind of tools or resources to make much of a life or do anything out there. Um, nature's a very right. uh, unrelenting, uh, merciless <laughs> Uh, creature, so uh, for sure, yeah. Humans need each other to survive. We need society and culture, and I feel like a lot of the, the bad behavior that we see in our current culture is owing to the fact that you don't really have community and tribe anymore. You don't have a group of people on whom you depend. If you piss off the people you're living near, you can go just move somewhere else where nobody knows you. And as long as you got some dollars, they'll they'll do business with you. And having a little bit more accountability amongst each other and 
having a little bit more, I think, moral accountability. And I think it's hard to have a discussion about voluntarism and anarchy without bringing morality into it because it is essentially a moral issue. It's immoral to go out and, you know, I mean, that's what you're claiming is government is immoral, right? And so right. it's, 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 you know, it's not, it's not easy to get everyone to agree on morality as a whole package, but for the most part, there are some really basic things that almost everybody willingly will agree to, you know, being moral and immoral and, Building that consensus is the challenge, which is why I really appreciate your work. You know, you're out there, you're talking to people, you're you're gaining more and more people. It seems like frequently to to start thinking about things this way and to start interacting with their community. And I, you know, I'm a little inspired. You know, I kind of want to see what what to what extent we can we can build up such a group out here. I've been part of local groups before. The one I was part of before in another town here in Oregon was all about food sustainability and all about canning and you know, socking away various food supplies for surviving in case there's nice. a calamity and also just learning how to work together as a group to do work on the homesteads, on the farms and stuff and work parties. And it was, you know, all, all of that's important, but I feel like, you know, just getting hunkering down and building our own little communities where we're, where we're growing food and stocking away things isn't really going to turn the tides against this system, which ultimately has won the battlefield of the mind. It's won people's thinking over and we have to change the way people think so yeah i mean when people talk again about that's why that's why i'm really appreciative of your work and i want to continue to check in with what what, what all you're, you're you are all up to so no thanks a lot eric yeah um yeah the government in terms of uh where it exists and people talk about abolishing the, the state abolishing government but yeah you can't show me government or the state without showing me individual people and it's yeah in the minds of where it exists and so yeah. here in richmond we have over two hundred thousand people uh, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a long term uh, mission that we're going for. Long term games we're going for. Uh, when that's going to mm -hmm. occur, when we finally get everyone, I'm not quite sure. But the more and more people that are joining us in our tribe, we have over a hundred members now. Uh, the more awesome. that that will continue to grow exponentially, more and more, uh, and one by one, right? And then uh, and that's one less person that would advocate this day. One less person that would advocate uh, economic illiteracy and the lies uh, of socialism. And those are very good kind of uh, values that we kind of have to kind of push forth. So it's uh, it's an endeavor that I, I'm committed to <laughs> until all of us are finally free. But I do already live free within my own community. No one advocates initiation force or votes against uh, one another or there's no politics involved. So that is uh, the closest to uh, the slice of uh, anarchistan. Uh, that we have here so far until we continue to grow that even more until all of Richmond is uh, a big a part of this. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's, it, it's, it's going to take a one-on-one -on -one conversation. It's going to take a lot of uh, reaching out. It's going to take a lot of spreading anarchy, but that's uh, what we got ourselves into from the very beginning. And now we have a, <laughs> a large family here in Richmond and that can only continue to grow and grow. That's awesome. I'm really glad to hear it. And I'm a, uh... I'm happy to be working at the same goal, you know, trying to spread the idea and help people to, to start to think about things differently so that we can eliminate the sort of mind pollution that is legitimizing the state. Well, I, that's all I have for you tonight. Cal, thanks for coming on and talking with me. And if you would tell people where they can find your work or find your videos, you have a website. Yeah, you can find um, the work at the website liberatervA.com. RVA is um acronym for uh, Richmond, Virginia. So... Uh, you can find that. You can go on YouTube. You can, you know, search for my name, Cal Molina. You'll find a lot of the videos of. Uh, it's pretty much just a way so you can see how you can also respond to a lot of these questions as well. Uh, I foresee in the near future doing a spreading anarchy campaign across the country. So <laughs> hopefully it won't be too long from now. I'll meet you out there in uh, in Washington and spreading anarchy in your communities and awesome out there as well. In the, Western Coast. Yeah, that sounds great, man. That sounds great. And I'm actually planning on, it's not set in stone yet, but I'm planning on doing a tour of the East Coast next year oh, nice. to yeah. promote my website. <laughs> and got a new book out. So we're somewhere along the way, we got to meet up and, uh, you know, keep, keep the good fight going because it's a, it's a, we have a long journey ahead for sure. Yeah. But it's encouraging to see other people that are out there really pushing and effectively seemingly. So congratulations, man. And again, thanks for talking with me and have a good night, everybody. You too, Eric. Stay liberated, buddy.
ready to mask Cause all my torment is past Swallow the pain, follow the mental terrain It takes a hell of a man Nowadays to maintain garments bloodstained Face bruised and battered Eyes reflect agony of dreams that were shattered It never mattered to the so-called general public About my nation's situation And how we rise above it and their other Will we self-destruct and kill a home And the greater responsibility, yes, it's still a home We should know by now that the system is designed For our demise If we have rivals, we'll be left behind Dollar signs rule But what about the pool? We'll fall victim to the material world.